Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Postscript. I'm Dan Slagle, the care and bridging pastor here at FaithBridge. And today I am with Michael Sullivan, Sully as we know him, who just preached a terrific message, Go in the Strength That You Have. It was a, a really good look at the life of Gideon and the importance of trusting God as we go into mission. Welcome, Sully. Thanks for having me. It's yeah, good you, to be here. you bet. Uh, so a question which has come in that I think probably speaks for a lot of people is uh, how do you know when you're being called. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's one thing to sit here and listen to a, a good message and, and feel that prompting in, in the moment, but when it comes down to brass tacks and you've got to make that decision, what, what are some ways you can know that you've been called? Sure. You know, I think first off, as I mentioned today, every single one of us has an invitation from God to engage in His mission. That's the Great Commission. We have all been called to jump in and join in. Um, but when it comes to some of the specifics, you know, how do you know? That's mm -hmm. kind of the question, right? And I think one very clear thing is Scripture. God's given us His Word, and when you find something in Scripture that God's prompting you to, that's probably a good indicator. I think a lot of times, even in my own life, I'm like, does God really want me to share the gospel with mm -hmm. my neighbor? Yes, that's what he tells us. He <laughs> says clear. to go and be a light, to, to go and tell. Um, that's what we're called to. You know, does God want me to pray for this man? Yes, pray for him. I mean, you know, or does God want me to go serve a widow or somebody, an orphan? Yes, it's in Scripture. Some so things think, are just self-evident. Right. Yeah. If it's in Scripture, if it's revealed in there, move towards it. I think... I had a friend tell me once that I'd rather be obedient and wrong to what I see in Scripture than disobedient. Well, sure. You know, yeah. uh, take the step. Worst case scenario, you just prayed for somebody, yeah. you know, or you shared the gospel, and we'll leave the rest up to God. I think when it comes down to something specific, well, example for me, how did you know that God was calling you to India? Uh, I think one of the indicators could be the opportunity. I mentioned that in the invitation, you asked me mm -hmm. to come. Uh, so here's God putting this invitation in front of me, an opportunity to go. And by the way, that's always a good sign. If I ask you to go on a mission you think trip, so I need to I need to jump in absolutely. and say yes. Uh, so you had invited me, and like I said, I was hesitant. And so as I began to pray about it, one of the things that I did is I just said, Lord, I know one surefire way to know if this is you, and that's through my wife. I went to the most godly woman that I know, Jill. And I thought, if Jill's reaction is that you need to go, then maybe that's a sign from the Lord. Um, and so that's why I pray. I said, Lord, I want you to speak through Jill. What is her leaning on this? And so I remember one night we were at, uh, I think on the way back from dinner, and I just said, hey, uh, you know, Dan's asked me about possibly going to India for 10 days this summer. What do you think? And she was like, Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I was, I was thinking, you know, maybe I need to explain why I was feeling maybe this might be God. No, sure. she was like, yeah. And and I was expecting ten days. You're going to be gone for ten days. I mean, you know, I don't want you to do that. I'm. She's going to be gone for a few weeks before this trip. And and no, she was a hundred percent. I think you need to do this. I can That's totally great. see. And so that was one thing. Another thing. When it comes to India, uh, and you know this because I've been going through it the last few weeks, is the Indian visa. Right. Not an easy process mm -hmm. to go through. It's a lot of paperwork and several steps, and they don't just hand these things out. No, I mean, they don't. you were saying uh, we've had several staff members who have wanted to go on mission to India, and that door has been slammed shut. Yeah. Uh, and for me personally, I was a, given a 10 year visa, which is even a uh, more than the norm. I mean, some people just get a 30 day or sure. a five year and, and here I was given a 10 year. So as you joked this week, that means I have to go to India for the next 10 years. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, there's the opportunity, there's the ask, uh, then some of these signs within part of it, I think comes down to passion. Do you have a passion for yeah. the invitation? I mean, I, I think here at Faith Bridge, there's a, you know, I mentioned today how you could serve in all these different areas. You could serve with kids. 
uh, it could be come down to a passion thing. If you really have a passion for, say, hospitality and making people feel welcome, well, then you should probably sign up for the hospitality team. I mean, if, if God gives you an open-ended invitation, pick where you're passionate, where you have your strengths. I, I think that's a, a good thing. So that's how I would answer the question. Great, great answer. Now, uh, considering uh, how these things are confirmed, uh, are there any trips left? Uh, we had 500 plus people sure. commissioned today. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it, it's unbelievable, but that did not take up all the spots. Mm -hmm. What, what, what is, remains? Yeah, talking to Seth this week, he said that there's 28 spots still available this fall that people can jump in and, okay. and join the road. Uh, I know specifically uh, of a few, we've got our women's encounter trip, which is leaving, actually all of these trips are in October, but the women's encounter uh, goes to Atlanta. Uh, they serve with a ministry called uh, uh, Rattle. Rattle, yep. Restoration Atlanta. And what they get, it's a really cool ministry, but basically uh, they're serving at a, a homeless shelter with some people who are getting back on their feet uh, just a, a really cool ministry for those women to partner uh, with down in Atlanta, or I guess over in Atlanta. Um, for the men, we have our men's encounter trip. That's a trip that I just went on. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We work with a uh, guy named Gary, and Gary is an amazing man. He has a ministry out of a box truck. I mean, essentially he has this truck that has every tool that you could ever imagine mm -hmm. ready to go to serve families who need construction projects. And so uh, when I went, uh, we were building a wheelchair ramp for a lady who uh, had become disabled while at her house. And uh, it was uh, up on some stilts. And so she needed a ramp to literally be able to get out of her house. She'd been in her house with stairs and they would have to either carry her down the wow. stairs or if she was able to do that. And so we built a wheelchair ramp so that now she's able to go get therapy. Cool. Uh, so there's different construction projects you do with Gary and a little perk being out in Alabama, uh, we tossed in the chance to play a little golf on the Robert Trent oh, Jones okay. trail. So that was uh, a definite, uh, I guess, motivator for some that went on the trip or at least a cherry on top of the work we get to do. Uh, finally, we have an overseas trip to London uh, to work with a ministry called K180. Mm -hmm. Uh, K180 is doing evangelism on the streets of London, yep. a really cool ministry. Our very own Jason Connor, uh, who was on staff here for a number of years, he and his wife Hannah have just joined their team. Yeah. And really, and I know Georgia got to go on that trip, yes, she did. Uh, Dan's daughter Georgia, last year. Uh, and just an amazing ministry, seeing all kinds of people coming to know the Lord through street evangelism. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, definitely, I would say that is a, a faith builder kind of trip. I mean, going out uh, and getting on a box in the middle of London and sharing the gospel is a big step, but it's definitely one uh, that is exciting and a, a cool opportunity uh, for Faith Bridgers to join in with. So those are the three. Uh, any of the information that we talked about, if you want cost and dates of those trips, you can hop, hop on the Faith Bridge website faithbridge.org slash the road, or even on the Faith Bridge app we mentioned today, so they can get on there and find it. Okay, well those all sound like terrific opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure folks will be signing up quickly. Mm -hmm. Hey, great message, thanks. thanks again. That'll do it for us today. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.